stripe. Here she comes. You got your chance to shorten that lead without the clock running, down by five. Free throws are going to be very big, as they always are, but they're going to be even bigger you know, as this game goes on with eight minutes, just over eight minutes remaining. And Geronimus subs out, as you can see, right behind the backboard on your screen. You can see one of the trainers stretching her out. She may be cramping as Brugman hits her first. Roderick testing her luck. Brugman in the fray, grabs the rebound even over Lehman. Obviously her elbow is fine as she goes two for two. Back to three. Tech Pershka gives it up. Boslovsky. Grillo's gonna stay in that man-to-man -man defense. Shaw says, I've been left with too much space, but she misses. Roderick, the primary ball handler, she gives up to Hesser. Reed with it. The pull up. Short as it gets stuck nearly between the back iron and the glass. Rebound by Lehman as she gives it up to Kakpershka. Lane Lord wanted a foul called on the shot by Reed, saying that she was hitting the arm. Roger keeping Kakpershka in front of her. And that's a travel. Lehman decide to pack her bags and go for a walk. And she never. She got that ball, never took a dribble, and picked up both feet. Very easy call there. The official in great position to see it, too. Lehman not happy about the call, almost giving a glaring glance to the officiating crew. Hesser, the spin move, almost lost the basketball. Gafford with 10 on the shot clock, flipped over. The kick out, Brugman, a big triple. Get it, folks! Just like that, this game is tied once again. And the crowd on their feet. This play starting to get loud. Lehman double team, the kick out. Boschlovsky wants a half court set in order to quiet the crowd. Fans are not going to hit the mute button as Lehman has it. The turnaround, the two, rattling out. Brugman and company with an opportunity to take the lead. Knotted up at 52. Kickback, Brugman feeling it. The triple leaves the shore. Rebound from Roderick, though. Roderick fouled. She will take a line. Rather, take a trip to the line and shoot two. Now that her team is in the double bonus. Yeah, Kat Kershka is going to be called for the foul. Brugman, she wanted that ball on the three-pointer, just left it short. But Pittsburgh State gets a big time rebound by Roderick. And you can see the PSU cheering fans, or rather cheer team, dressed up as Romans. Don't worry, we do not dress up like that normally. It's their toga night or some toga day, something like that. I, I heard people talking about it. I guess Cupid wears a toga, and since it's oh, Valentine's Day, that, that makes sense. Going with a little toga party. Well, no love right now between the Tigers and the Gorillas as Roderick takes her first and gives the Gorillas a lead, their first of the second half. This is almost about the same amount of time that Pittsburgh State took the lead in the first half. Let's see if they're able to you know, keep the pressure on Fort Hayes and hold on to this lead. It seems like everything's been going their way these last couple minutes. Roderick, dose for dose, her team now up two. Boslovsky. Put on the accelerator, she slows down on the nostril of the split face. Kesser guarding, Boslovsky throws it up, almost an and one, as she bounces up and down. Foul going gets Tesser. I can't even say her name correctly, Boslovsky. <laughs> the junior just attacking the rim. Again, she's only 5'6", but she plays with a lot of heart. She's not afraid to get down low, and getting some Base, call that foul. Opportunity to knot it all up at 54, but she misses her first. A tick under six remaining. Boslovsky, an obvious foul. As Hester tried to cut underneath for the steal. Second shot. She doesn't miss both. Boslovsky continues to score now in double digits with the free throw. PSU up one, under six remaining. 
It's almost as if the fate of the world hangs in the balance for this basketball game. Brugman off the bounce, the kick out, Reed, the two. Short rebound from Roderick. New shot clock for her team as Reed has it again. The second offensive rebound and as many trips for Roderick. She had that last offensive rebound on the last possession. She went to the free throw line. Second chance opportunities are big and just like that, Reed takes advantage of it. And Reed, the step back, who is the other side of the pillow as her team is now up three. The Gorillas forcing the turnover, going the other way. Boslowski, yeah, Boslowski dribbled it off her leg. Looked like she just lost control of it. Reed was reaching in for the steal, and it created all kinds of havoc. Yeah, that may have helped force the turnover. And Defense Reed, has been very big this second half. Reed, great on offense, too, now that you mentioned that. She's almost in double digits, rather in double digits. Speaking of which, the turnaround. Roderick almost coming away with the offensive rebound. Under five now. Nolan, what do you think the Tigers need on this offensive possession? Well, they just, they got to maybe look for Lehman. We're going to see Boschlowski throw up a shot and miss it. But I'm surprised they haven't gotten the ball down to Lehman's hands these last few possessions. And we're going to get a timeout called by Lane Lord. And Coach Lord and company using a timeout, 428 remaining. Tigers down three, PSU battling back with a vengeance. As we'll take a quick look at some replays, Boschlowski over to Shaw. The feed down to Lehman. As you mentioned, the ball has barely gone down low in the post, at least for the last 10 minutes. And I think a lot, you know, most of that has to do with Pittsburgh State's defense. They've picked up the tempo. The tempo, they've ratcheted it down, tightened things up. We see the steal there by Hesser. She lays it in for two. These last 10 minutes, Pittsburgh State, they got down by eight, but they've just clawed their way back in it. The crowd's back in it for them. And Fort A State, they just don't look like the same team that we saw early in this basketball game. And you can obviously tell the fans are on the gorilla side, obviously inside John Lance Arena in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Coach Lord wanting his team as focused as possible now that we are about the 430 mark. Coach Hobson, what do you think, what changes do you think he needs to make? Well, you just, you got to get the ball to your best player offensively. But you got to maybe get some screens and get her out in space. I mean, just anything because, yeah, she has had, uh, Kate Lehman has had hardly any touches these last five minutes. We know Fort A State's not much of an outside shooting team. You know, their bread and butter is attacking down low in the paint. That's something they have not been able to do this second half. Gorillas with 4.03 remaining with an opportunity to topple the number two team in the nation and possibly claim a stake to the MIAA conference title. Reed inbounding. Bridget Hester, the senior. Reed under 15. Mason up on her. Brugman under 10 now. Geronimus trying to use her ball handling skills, loses it. Three seconds left, make it two. Brugman tosses up near half court, almost gets it, bounces off the front iron though. Gafford foul, and she will now go to the free throw line. Unbelievable. Pittsburgh State just throws up that shot to beat the shot clock. And then they get the rebound. And I believe we're going to have our under five media timeout. Yeah, with that, Cavs 13 will return soon with the climax for this game. KKOW has positively been influencing the Pittsburgh State community for the last 70 years. KKOW provides classic country and game day coverage for the Gorilla fan. Turn your radio dial today to 860 AM. You are watching Caps 13. 
Welcome back, folks. Lizzie Geronimus battling for the 50-50 ball. Brugman near half court, chucks it up. Gafford sacrificing her body for the rebound, hits the deck, and now she will have two shots. An opportunity to propel her team to possibly a five-point lead as Lord and company break out of the timeout. It's unbelievable. Pittsburgh State at one point had no momentum whatsoever this second half. And just one little spark was all they needed. They, they got a lead. So far been able to hang on to it these last three minutes. And now they're at the free throw line in the double bonus. So quiet, you could hear a pin drop as the first free throw drops. I feel like I have to bring my voice down and be quiet because I don't want anyone to come over here and look at me like I'm crazy. You get that quite a bit, don't you there, Cameron? Yeah, you know it, Nolan. You know it. Second attempt, Gafford off the back iron, rebound coming from Shaw. Four-point contest now, both Shlovsky and company trying to keep the 21-win streak alive. Possibly expand that to 22 as Boshlovsky tosses it up, Geronimus with the rebound. The skip. Brugman not going to force it. Reed, a wide open lane, she pulls up. That would have been big if she could have hit that. Rebound by West again. I do like how Pittsburgh State not wanting to just sit back and run some clock. They want to keep you know, the pressure on Fort Hayes. Try to keep scoring. Don't just sit back and let Fort Hayes back in this game. Shaw trying to feed Lehman. And as you mentioned, Nolan, trying to go right back to their playmaker. Gafford sends her back. UPS style. The big time block by Gafford. Kate Lehman so used to doing that to everybody. She averages over four a game, but Gafford just sends it right back in her face. Grab your postage stamps, folks, as Brugman has it top of the key. She hit a triple to propel the Gorillas to a lead. Under 10 now, Geronimus, Lizzie 2K, the pull up off the back iron though. Offensive rebound, no, going the opposite direction. Reed may have gone over the back, which will put the Tigers in the bonus in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Pittsburgh State was able to take advantage of the bonus when they were trailing in this game, and now Fort A State, the rest of the way, will be shooting some bonus free throws. And Geronimus, she loves that pull-up jump shot. It's rare to see her miss something like that. Now that was good defense by Fort Hayes. It put a hand in her face just enough to offset that shot. Mason shooting the one-on-one. -on -one. No pressure as she misses her first and only. Brugman with the rebound, scores table indicating that there's supposed to be a substitution. Coach Lord, irate, you may not be able to see him on your screen, but he's not happy about the stoppage of play. Maybe the, uh, the official scorer thought that basket was gonna go in, and they are gonna grant the substitution here. Well then, Coach Lord making the case that I should be able to bring in someone, and he does as Burgess is checking in for Reed. She may get a breather for about 30 seconds, but she'll probably come back in. She's been a big spark, Reed has offensively for the Gorillas, and that's what a senior is supposed to do. You step up, be that senior leader when everybody else is struggling. You just, you get your chance to shine, and she has. Four points separate the top 10 teams in the nation. Hester looking for Brugman, she's not there. The senior just right back over, Brugman trying to set the ball screen. Clock winding down, under 10, Roderick fights through the contact and gets the roll. When it counts the most, the senior comes through, her team up six, 2.15 left, Lehman, weak side, answers right back with a basket of her own. Yeah, the big time post entry pass to Kate Lehman, right over the head of Lizzie Geronimus. She's able to turn around and knock it in. That may come back to the Gorillas getting back on defense, not allowing the Lehman to set up. Fort A State, they're being down by four points. You cannot trade baskets the rest of the way. You're under two minutes. You have to come up with a big stop here. Burgess the triple. The world hanging on the balance with that one. Last touch by the Tigers, staying with Pitt State along with the new shot clock. They have an opportunity to wind down the game clock to about a minute 10. Substitution as Kylie Gafford comes back into the basketball game for the Gorillas. 
Both teams in the bonus, although the Grills are in the double. Drama's ball swung to her. 27 seconds left in the game. Heating up a little bit of the clock as she's trying to find someone to outlet it to. Pittsburgh State being patient, but you can't be too patient. The turn. Brugman leaves it short. Rebound coming by Boschlovsky. A minute 15 remaining. Gorilla fans now on their feet, cheering on defense. The two by Shaw off the back iron. Rebound from Hesser. Lehman trying to come up with the steal. Trying to keep pace with the point guard now as Hesser's fouled. And the senior will now pack her bags and stay at the inclusive resort, which is the charity line. Boschlowski, the Fort A. State Tiger, called for the foul. They're going to have a timeout called by the Fort Hay State Tigers. They'll have two remaining after this, but Hesser pushing the ball past Lehman. Boschlowski trying to come away with a steal, nearly an intentional, trying to stop a little bit of the clock. And not only that, trying to keep her team in the basketball game. Exactly one minute remaining, Nolan, pending these free throws. The Gorillas go up anywhere between five and six points. What do you think the Tigers need to do in order to possibly keep pace? They got to get the ball up the court very quickly. They're down two possessions. And at most, they'll still be down two possessions if Pittsburgh State is able to hit the two free throws. You know, put them up by six. But yeah, Fort A. State, you got to push the ball up very quickly. You don't have to shoot three-pointers yet. You just got to get the ball, you know, probably down in the Kate Lehman's hands as quick as you can. They don't have any time to set up an offense and find an open shot. Hester's first. That's good. Brings fans to their feet. Hester with three points. A senior who's been on the bench for a little bit this evening due to Michaela Burgess's play. Hester. Her second. Leaves it short. Brugman almost came up with the O board. Five minutes left in the contest. Boschlovsky taking her time. Her team down five. Shaw setting herself the curl back to the top of the key. Gafford posting up on Kate Lehman down low. Lehman with it. Gafford rejects it, but that's a foul. Yeah, over she, th yeah she reached right over the back of Kate Lehman. Yeah, that'll most likely be Gafford's fourth. You see it it here. Is. She knocks the ball away with her left hand, but she had her right hand on the back of Kate Lehman. Now you have a senior shooting a one-on-one. -on -one. She has to hit the first of these in order to stay alive. Came into this game shooting 67% on free throws. Hits knocks, her first. Yeah, knocks down that big first one to earn that second shot. All right, do you need to keep talking about Lehman in order for the curse to set in? Hopefully she misses the second one, maybe. I might just keep talking about it, but I'll just let the, the crowd try to do their job for me. Lehman second, misses it. Rebound by Roderick, tipped out of bounds. Staying with the Gorillas, either going towards the direction of the Gorillas. Tigers pleading their case. We'll take a quick look. Roderick trying to battle for the ball. She has it in her hand momentarily popped out by Faxon. Yeah, and Jill, now, yeah, Jill Faxon, she knocked it away at that last second. The refs are going to want to review this play, especially since the game hangs in such a balance. Something as menial as this should not decide the course of this game. No, not at all. I don't think this will be that long of a look by the officials, though. It looked clearly like Jill Faxon was the one who knocked it away she swung her right hand up, and the ball popped straight up in the air, too. Oh, I, de I definitely agree with that. But right now, Coach Lane Lord drawing up something for his girls. 38 seconds left. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a quick foul by the Tigers. Although the Gorillas are on the double bonus, they're going to have to foul someone on the team who's a poor free throw shooter, and that's kind of few and far in between. Yeah, there's got to be someone on Fort Hayes' bench letting the players know. They're probably talking about free throw percentages. Who's the weaker free throw shooter out on the court so she does you know if, if she were to get the ball foul her right away and you see the official call there the gorillas do have the basketball yeah Fort A. State they have to foul 
And Pittsburgh State, you cannot commit a turnover right here. As, as, you know, it's a lot easier said than done. Forty State, the best defense in the MIAA. They're going to be putting a lot of pressure on the Gorillas. And a quick change as Burgess is in. She bounces it over to Hesser. She's doubled. Quite sure if Coach Lord called a timeout or if it's a foul on the floor. I think it is a foul on the floor as Hesser appears to be trotting over to the free throw line. The foul going against Shaw. That is her fifth and final as she will exit the ball game. She is one of the players to watch for the Fort A State Tigers. She had a very good game in the first meeting, but Pittsburgh State quieted her down tonight. 11 points and a handful of rebounds for her. The senior from Nebraska coming in at 5'10", almost reduced a double-double as Hesser, who went one of two last time, has two more underway. Her first, everyone kind of sighed saying, oh no, it happens to dance around on the back guard and fall right back in. Yeah, it was not pretty, but there's no such thing as bonus points on free throws. Second, that one for sure rattles out. Lehman gives it up, Oslowski trying to direct traffic as she passes half court. 30 seconds remaining. She spins, floats it up, that's high. Lehman misses, Brugman with the rebound. She's immediately fouled. 25 seconds left in the contest. Pitt State just needs to hit a couple free throws. You can see the 4A State Tigers, they were a little frustrated. Kate Lehman not liking the shot attempt there by Boschlowski. As Boschlowski, she just threw one up. She went with that spin move, but didn't have that good of a look for a shot. Now Burgess, who either hurt her shoulder or her elbow, missed two free throws recently, but then she went two of two last time, and she seems to be fine as she hits her first. Yeah, you could definitely tell she's no longer in pain. That was a, a fortunate break for the Gorillas when she went down holding that shoulder. Brugman's shot decides to be a pest and rattles out. The pull-up, the triple, backs in. That's good. That's a big three-point jump shot coming from the sophomore, whittling down the score to just three. 18.4 seconds remaining. We are far from done here, folks. Just the third three-pointer for the Fort A. State Tigers, and they needed that one. If Pittsburgh State missing that free throw, they could have made it a three-possession game, but they missed it. It was only a two-possession game, and now you knock down that big-time triple. They're down by three points. And a near pull out as we look at some replays. Lehman completely rejected by Gafford as she kept her balance inside. Roderick throwing it up, getting the very friendly roll. And in transition, the quick step back. Geronimus challenges, but still too good. Great defense, but perfect offense. Has an excellent shot there by Jill Faxon. 18.4 seconds exactly. Hesser inbounding. Lobs it over the top. Burgess happens to come up with it. She's immediately fouled. Clock stops at 17. So Boschlovsky picks up her second. Really no repercussions when it comes to her. As everyone heads down to the other end of the court, Burgess will have two shots. This can be a lot of pressure for our freshman, though. The first is good. And she shot that free throw like there was no pressure on her whatsoever. You're in a three-point game against a number two team in the country on a 21-game winning streak, and you knock down that first one. I in her veins as she goes two for two. Back to a five-point game. Tigers may want to pull up real quick for the triple as Roderick, who specializes in defense, comes back in. Faxon, who hit the triple last time, brings it up. The cross over the screen, picks up her dribble. 10 seconds left, the three. Left, leaving it short. Rebound coming from Gafford and the foul. Five seconds left. You can get a sense of the John Lance Arena now. Feeling very comfortable with five seconds remaining. Up by five and a chance to stretch that into a three possession lead. Hundreds of hundreds of people have flocked here this evening to see this matchup. We'll take a look. The quick three by Kekpershka. Off target rebound by Gaffer. She's immediately fouled. And Lizzie Geronimo is trying to get the fans pumped. 
the first free throw does not drop. Five seconds left, still two timeouts left by the Tigers. Gafford hits it. Tech Pershka, she needs to pull up now. She's blocked by Gafford. And that is all she wrote, folks. The number two for Hay State Tigers upset by the Pittsburgh State Gorillas inside John Lance Arena. The final score, 65-59. The Gorillas come through. What a big way to end that game as Kylie Gafford just swats that one away to reject that three-pointer. Pittsburgh State, it wasn't pretty in all sorts, but they just they kept battling. They never lost focus. They kept going and going. They got down by 10. They got down 8, and they never lost focus. Nolan, you have on this sheet of paper, paper with our information on it, you have finished, underlined, and highlighted. Did the Gorillas finish oh, this evening? They did. They, they had the lead in the first half. They let it slip away from them. They got the lead back in the second half, and they never looked back. They made their free throws. They played excellent defense. They earned this one tonight. And the Gorillas snapped the Tigers' 21-game win streak as Reed hit a big pull-up jump shot inside. Lehman continued to score. She was a threat the entire evening. Keck Persia continues to attack inside. The Tigers, in essence, were all over the Gorillas early on in the first half and second half, garnering double-digit leads, but the Gorillas never gave up. The fans on their side, the freshmen going straight to work. Yeah, it looked like... Ford, well, Pittsburgh State, just they never changed anything up offensively. They just kept attacking. Their shots weren't falling, but Coach Lohr just told them, you know, keep shooting, keep shooting. They will fall, and eventually they did. And they did, and the defense was also stingy, only allowing 50-plus points to the number one ranked offensive team in the MIAA. Yeah, definitely. They shut them down. They went right after Kate Lehman. Kate Lehman had her points, but... They just kept double teaming her and they shut her down. Fort A State, not much of a three point shooting team and they weren't hitting them tonight. And Gafford and company celebrate as they will most likely advance in the national ranking, have an opportunity to take part of the MIAA title. And either way, they win 65 59. Nolan, any last closing thoughts? Oh, just a great hard fought victory by the Gorillas. You know, like I said, it wasn't pretty, all sorts of the game, but they stuck around, they earned it. They're going to need some help from other teams in MIAA to maybe get a share of the title, but they put themselves in a great position. From Cameron Molina and Caps 13, along with Nolan Peters, thank you for watching this evening. Did you know that a wish granted gives a child and their family a chance to feel normal, stress-free, and may improve their condition? Did you know it costs an average of $7,500 to grant one child's wish? Did you know that in 2012, Make-A-Wish granted the wishes of 14,000 children with life-threatening illnesses? Did you know that every 28 minutes, a child is referred to Make-A-Wish? Did, Did you know your Gorilla athletes want to make just one of those wishes come true? I'm Dylan Dolly, Make-A-Wish Chair for the Pittsburgh State Student Athletic Advisory Committee. This year, Gorilla student athletes have set a goal to raise $8,000 for Make-A-Wish to hold a wish granting ceremony for a local kid right here at Pittsburgh State. Visit PittStateGorillas.com and click on the Make-A-Wish logo to donate. It is a secure donation site and every little bit will help us reach our goal. Thank you for sharing the power of a wish. There is no secret routine. There is no magical number of reps and sets. What there is, is confidence. Hard work on a constant basis. And a desire to succeed. Stay active, stay fit, strive to be a healthy gorilla. Caps 13.